So we're recording now, and I will tell the people who might see this just on video, I will say that we are going to use props today. So if you can get two blocks, your blanket, your mat, and if possible, a strap. And it is perfectly legitimate to improvise with these. If you don't have a strap, like this one, you can use the belt from your bathrobe. You can use a, another real belt, like one that goes around your waist. You can use an old necktie or a dish towel. And if you don't have anything, don't panic. We will make accommodations for you as well. Um, we we'll begin on our backs. So Go ahead and set your mat up comfortably. If you need a prop under your neck, please feel free to put a blanket there. Find your way to Shavasana position on your back, on your mat. But if you get to Shavasana and find that you're not, oops, I, have, I still don't have that right, sorry. If you get to Shavasana and find that you are still not comfortable, there we go. If you get to Shavasana and find that you're not comfortable, uh, flat on your back today, if your back is giving you a little information, then um, you can always bend your knees and uh, have your feet flat on the floor with your knees facing up. Many times this will give you the lower back relief. You need to be comfortable relaxing on the floor. And as I say, of course, put a blanket under your head if your neck is not comfortable here. So find your place on the floor and close your eyes and begin to feel the floor beneath you. Notice all the places that your body connects to the floor. And how does that feel? Probably the back of your legs. If your legs are long, it will be the back of your legs, but not all your legs, just your, your heels, your calves, perhaps your thighs, your hips and your bum. Then the upper back, there'll be a gentle Larch through the lower, gentle arch through the low spine. Your shoulders, see if you can connect with your shoulders on the ground and encourage those shoulder blades to lay flat underneath you, the back of your head, the back of your arms and your hands. And begin to notice your breath. Just observe for a moment and feel what's going on. Feel if your breath touches any of those areas in your back. Do you feel the breath coming into the back? And if you don't, begin to encourage that sensation that the breath is entering and connecting to the back of your body, especially the back of those legs. Lengthen the breath and begin an even ratio breath so that your inhale and your exhale are of equal length. Feel your belly rise with the inhale. Bring the breath into the low belly and then let it rise up through the body all the way up to your shoulder blades and the shoulder blades widen and settle onto the floor with your exhale as the breath leaves your body. And as you lie here and begin this long yoga breath, I have a reading very short to offer you. It's called grounding. Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. Feel the love, the longing, the fear in your bones. Open your heart to who you are right now. 
not who you would like to be, not the saint you are striving to become, but the being right here before you, inside you, around you. You are already more and less than whatever you can know. Breathe out, touch in, let go. So feel that wind, the wind of your breath rustling gently through your body as you fill completely. And at the apex of your inhale, see if you can sip in just a few more molecules of air. And as you exhale, blow out at the very bottom, just puff like you're puffing out a birthday candle. and clear your lungs completely so that the fresh air you breathe in can open every little passage, fill every little area all through that long complex of your lungs that runs way from the base of your lower ribs up towards your collarbone. Those miracle organs. It's the muscles around the ribs that make the breathing happen. The ribs themselves, act, the lungs themselves are, are not muscular tissue. So with our breathing, which happens by our effort or without effort, the muscles surrounding those lungs make the lungs expand and contract. And by that effort of breathing in as much as we possibly can, we can actually expand our lung capacity, just as you would through aerobic exercise. And breathing all the way out, we can clear that air. The breath is used to help us arrive and settle and connect the mind to the body, the spirit to the body. Well, this pranayama at the beginning of class is very important. And if you don't, if you find during class that you're not able to find this long, even breath, it's a sign you might be working harder than you need to be right now. And you can take something off, release something, come partially out of the pose, ease up, or if you need to, to catch your breath and find that capacity to breathe deeply, come completely out of the pose to something comfortable like a seat or a child's pose or even Shavasana to find that deep breath again and rest. I'm not there to watch you. You are the keeper of your well-being here and it couldn't be in better hands because you all know your body so well and in this work are helping to uh, expand that knowledge. When you need to rest, rest. Don't need to push any pose or take it farther than is comfortable for you today. It's always great to be working on your edges and working into the pose. Um, and pushing a little bit, but practice compassion, no pain. Just that feeling of release and expansion and strengthening. When that feels good, you'll know it. When it's wrong, then take yourself back. Take care of your, take very good care of yourselves. We have all survived through the first four months of this. We have to hang in and do well to see how it all ends up. Great mysteries abound. Let's all tent our legs now. So if you have your legs long, bring them up to the feet on the floor position and begin to move that breath. Allow that breath to move the pelvis, starting with the pelvic tilt. So exaggerating as you breathe in and letting the belly rise high and the lower curve in your spine, that lumbar curve, heighten and open. 
And then as you exhale, press down through the belly and let all the air come out and the belly work towards the floor. And feel as you do this action, this beginning of motion through the lower spine and check in with that spine as you do this. See how that lower back is feeling. You can make this motion big or small according to how it feels in your body. That wonderful spinal tilt, that pelvic tilt, actually massaging the lower back gently on the floor and finding your range of motion in your back today. It may increase as you work through class. As you work through class, you may find yourself warming up and getting a little bit more going on there. And let the breath be the force that moves this pelvic tilt. And if you wish, you can start to add a little more action. As you inhale, you can press with your feet and start to lift slightly off the floor. As, that's as you, and as you exhale, return down to the ground. So inhale and press and lift a little bit and then roll down through the spine on the exhale. Inhale and rise up, pushing and lower down. This is probably your first bridge pose of the day. So work carefully and don't push more than you need to. It's absolutely not required to lift your hips at all. You can stay with the pelvic tilt on the floor. Whichever action you are doing, let's add a little bit of a challenge. Now, as you inhale, raise just the right arm up overhead. And as you exhale, you're going to roll down, lower that right arm and roll the head away to the left. So you're doing a quarter turn with your head away from that arm. Now, as you inhale, let the head come straight, looking up and the left arm rise. And as you exhale, you lower that left arm and let your head roll away from that arm and lower the pelvis. You inhale, right arm, pelvis up. And exhale, allow the head to roll away from the arm that's lowering. It's a very gentle neck release. If the action is confusing to you, then don't worry about it. You can do the same thing just with your head. You can raise your hips and as you lower, just let the head go to one side, roll gently away and rise up as you rise up. And as you exhale, let the head roll the other direction. Or you can use the arm and roll away from the arm. We'll do four more, two more on each side. And notice what's going on with your neck and head as you do this. Just let the weight of the head roll it as if you're looking towards the side of the room and we're alternating from side to side of the room. And this will be the last one by my count. Lower away, then bring the head up to look at the ceiling. Now bring both knees in towards your chest and explore the back of your pelvis this way with your knees bent. Also notice what happens to your breath now. Different configuration, the belly may be a little bit constricted. What does, how does that change your breath? It just the observation will help keep that connection of the breath. I like to draw my knees in circles here, taking the knees with my hands and rotate slowly around the edges of the sacrum bone, deep, deep in the flesh and the muscle back there. See if I can find those edges. Give yourself a little massage. You can also just roll 
back and forth if that feels better. Then take it, whatever you're doing, try taking it in the alternate direction. Feel what's going on now. Checking in with that lower back. Feeling a little bit more action here. Then make those circles become smaller until you are stable again. Pull the knees in one more time. Give them a good hug. And then let them come to the floor. Again, pressing your feet towards the floor. And then let's take the arms out wide and do the action we've done a few times recently by taking the one arm, in this case, I'm going to take my left arm and bend it and put the hand towards my chest, then roll to the right, trace, I'm going to trace my bottom arm with my top arm, even reach beyond that if I can, opening up the top of my back and the top of your back, and let your hand come back as you roll your hips back to the floor, rest on your chest. So you inhale, you can push with that foot that's away on the floor. You let your arm trace each other and roll back. And you're rolling across the top of your back, very much the same action we took along the lower hips. We're now taking along the upper back and shoulders. We'll do that three more times with an inhale. Take the hand across the arm and then roll back. This should feel good. It should feel nice and opening. If it doesn't, see what adjustments you can make. Is it, does it need to be smaller? Do you need to move more slowly? Or do you need to not do that exact motion? And open both arms, and this time we'll take the right arm on the chest and take the same motion to the other side. Inhale, reach out and away, and exhale, roll back. Opening up the whole upper back. As you do this, you can make it more of a twist by leaving the hips on the floor as long as possible, and then letting the hips roll with you. If you have a little resistance at the hip, with the hips at the beginning of this motion, you'll get a little more stretch. It's a way of increasing the stretch, if that feels good. Two more times. I'm not counting, but hopefully this is uh, fairly equal work for both sides. and roll back and open the arms and take a breath here. Pelvic tilt if that feels good to see how that affected your upper back. Just get some feedback. Maybe there's some warmth. Let's move on. I'm going to find my strap and bring it over to the mat. Let's explore the back of the legs further with a bit of a stretch. So with both knees on the floor, take your strap, whatever you found. If you haven't found your strap, you can take the back of your thigh, back of your calf, or your pants. But bend the knee, if you have a strap, and take it across the ball of your foot. Then let your shoulder blades flatten down to the floor and uh, so that your arms are long, reaching one half of the strap in each hand. You can stay in this position or stretch the opposite leg long. We're not very warmed up now, so it might feel better for you to have your back of your, your other leg bent. I'm going to start that way, and along the way, I see if I want to lengthen my leg. And uh, gently encourage that leg towards your body. You can Take your hands higher up the strap and relax your shoulders down. Keep the foot flexing so that the heel is working towards the ceiling and the back of your 
of your pelvis, your, your bum, your gluteal muscle is still planted on the floor. In fact, let's all take both straps in our left hand for a moment, take our right hand and reach the uh, crook of your thumb and finger back into where that working leg bends at the hip and push down and try pulling with the one hand as you push away and see what you find in the back of your leg. What's going on back there? What does that feel like today? And if you want to try lengthening this, you can straighten the other leg that will increase the stretch. So if you're fine with this stretch, if you're getting enough, you do not need to strengthen, lengthen that leg. And I forgot to turn off my phone, excuse me. that leg talk, talk, talk towards you. The phone is off now, so sorry. Push away, push away. And then let's take both hands in, both sides of the strap in the right hand, take the left hand, place it on the opposite hip, the left hip. If you have your right leg up, it will be the left hip and vice versa. And press down into that leg as you allow the leg to fall to the side. It may not go very far right now because we're early on in the class. You'll feel your hip joint talking to you. So listen, see what it's saying. How much can it take? How much does it want right now? How does it feel? Is it cranky? Is it optimistic? How is that joint working for you today? And send sensation, send your breath into the sensation of opening. If it's painful, come up. Do not let this be more than your body wants. Just one more breath here. And then lift with your belly strong, lift that leg up. And we'll do take the same thing across the body. And for this one, leave your hip on the floor. Leave that hip of the working leg, the leg that's up, leave it on the floor. So it's a very small motion. You probably will feel it across the IT band across the outside of that leg. If you find your leg is cramping, you can just bend it a little bit and release that. This is a, this is a big stretch for the beginning of class, so be very, very easy and gentle. Just explore it, see how it feels today. And release that. Bend the top leg so you can remove your strap if you have one. Take both legs long. <clears throat> Take a breath and compare those two legs. And we'll do the other side. Bend the feet, the knees, the feet, press the feet into the floor, lift the left leg up and take your strap along the toes, the toe mound of the left leg as it reaches up to the floor. Reach up through the back of the leg by flexing the foot and pushing the heel towards the ceiling. And then take both hands on the rope, on the strap. Let your shoulder blades relax to the floor and see what's going on in the left leg. If it worked well for you, you can do the action where you take both straps in the right hand, take the left hand making that L shape and pressing that L shape into the joint where the leg bends on the floor and pushing away so that you're like keeping the side of the body long. It also turns out to be a good deal of exercise for the working arm here as you encourage the leg towards your body and feel what's going on with the back of the left leg and send your breath into the sensation of stretch and release. Let your breath be that a wind, wind of opening that runs through the back of that leg. Long, long area. Sometimes the long stretch along the hamstrings in the back of the legs are called the lifelines. Then take both straps in the left hand and let the leg fall to the left. 
as you use your right hand to encourage the right hip to stay on the floor. And see what's going on with the hip and the release of the inner leg on the opposite side. What's going on on the left here? And use your breath here to come into that sensation of opening. If this is a lot, finish when you need to. Let your leg come back to the center whenever you're ready. Remember the breath work. And as you come out of this, let's all come out, flatten the belly. That strong belly helps that leg come up. And we'll take it gently across the body with the release of the IT band, the outer side of that leg. It can be, this, sometimes this is only an inch or two, very small motion. It's a hard area to stretch, but it's very helpful with knee health and strength to keep this band of tissue open and long. And then bring the leg up straight. You can bend the bottom leg, bend the top leg, and release both legs to the floor. While we're here, let's do a little ab work. We'll start by lifting the legs. And this time you can just let the legs drape. Let them drape long so that your knees are up you're at the front of your legs, your calves and your feet are just hanging down. And we're going to raise both legs up together. As you do this, feel your belly press into the floor. And then exhale, inhale, exhale, and feel your uh, exhale continue to press that belly in the floor. So you inhale and raise the legs and you'll feel your lumbar curve flatten as you do this maybe here, and then lower them down. Inhale and lengthen and lower down. We have two options here to add. One is as you inhale, take the arms overhead. And as you exhale, let the legs lower. Let the arms lower down. So the arms move up and then back with the legs. Another option is to take the hands and interlace them and place them at the base of your neck. And this time, this is the most work there is. So if you feel really strong, you can try this one. You can lift into a gentle crunch as the legs come up. So I'm going to do eight more. And I'm not sure how many you are going to do. You are going to do as many as correct for your body. You can always sit out for a couple and then come back. If you have one more in you. Remember, whichever version you're doing, that you want to feel that belly really working into the floor. And as you lift, if you're doing the lift with your arms behind your head, you want to make sure that it's your belly that is working, not your arms. The hands are there to support your neck. And I'm not counting perfectly, but I think I have two more. And then we're going to lower and take one of your blocks, place it between the knees, feet on the floor, and to release any tension that's been created across the front of the body from those contractions, push into the floor, then come back towards your bridge pose. Feel the knee, if you have the knees working together, you'll feel the back of your legs will light up Really feel that the quads will be working and the glutes. Press the feet into the floor and let the knees reach away from you. The shoulder blades can be tucked under and sometimes people can even grasp their hands behind them. That's not necessary. 
pushing the upper arms and the floor is an excellent arm variation. If you have a tendency for your ribs to pop up when you do this, and I'm demonstrating that ribs popping up, see if you can let, relax those ribs back now. They don't have to do that work. And work is through your legs and your feet. If you're pressing your upper arms and your shoulders down, the work is there. But the ribs can be in line with the body. Let's take two more breaths, really pushing into the floor here. This is a good leg strengthener as well. Then everyone raise your heels and roll down through the spine all the way to the floor. can take your block out from between your knees. We're going to come to hands and knees position. So one good way to do that is to roll to your side and let the top arm help you press up. Another way is just to uh, take hold of the back of your legs or the front of your knees and get a little momentum and give your spine a little bit of massage as you roll back and forth and rise to First, a seated position, and then roll over those feet and come to hands and knees. Many of us will like to have extra padding under the knees, so your blanket is uh, excellent work, will work really well for that. You can also, of course, just roll uh, the mat up under your knees as you do that. So take a moment, everybody come to hands and knees and reorient to this gravitational chain. And just feel, oh, sorry kids, that was my dog. She knocked the computer down. Roll, uh, feel what feels good as you work on your, in that hands and knees position. How, move around. You can try churning your ribs back and forth. Churning your ribs in a circle. There we go. You can um, do a uh, cat-cow work. You can wiggle your hips. Move as feels good. The rib churning works like this. You allow your your belly to drop, and then you take an isolation. That's a, how the dancers talk about it. They isolate the ribs and take just the rib cage to the right, and then up, and out to the side, and down. One of my teachers uses the um, analogy of uh, the blades of an ice cream churn scraping the sides of the can. And in this case, your ribs are the blades of the ice cream churn scraping the sides of the can. And you can take that in both directions. It also feels good when you're done with this to find your stable position where you're halfway between the cat and the cow. And reach, take your head, look over to the side and then look back to see if you can find your bum and let your bum turn towards you. You're stretching away. In this case, I'm looking to the right, so I'm stretching my left side, making a, that C shape we use on the ground, but we're not on the ground now. And try it to the other side, expanding the ribs. For me, as I look to the left, it's expanding the ribs on the right. And you can move back and forth with that with your breath two or three times. Kind of like a dog wagging its tail and then checking over its shoulder to see if the tail is working. And let that motion become smaller too. And let's come down to child's pose for a moment. So everyone, find your stability and come back towards your heels. If you don't have the room and, or the um, 
range of motion to come all the way back. You can always take a block in between or a folded blanket works really well too. As you come to your child's pose, let your head relax down. If your head won't come all the way down, it's nice to put a block or blanket under your head. Little we'll support there. If your head comes all the way down, that's fine. But wherever you are, stretch your arms long and let your shoulders feel that work. Light up your arms, press your palms down and feel that extension through your shoulders. You can even wiggle your, wiggle your hand, creepy crawl your fingers forward and feel all the range you have there. And then relax and take your shoulders into, take your elbows out, hands together, so you're making a diamond shape with your hands, with your, with your arms and your hands, and allow the head to relax. The diamond shape for many people is a very relaxing, stable position for the arms in child's pose. So test that one out, see how that one feels. Let your breath come all the way back into your pelvis, all the way towards the back of your body. And from here, let's rise again to hands and knees. Stretch the right foot back, toes under and push the heel back so we find a long stretch through the back of the calf, Achilles tendon, using the breath to ease and open those muscles which become tight. Then let the leg rise so it's parallel to the floor. See if you can find your spine, part of that line, and press up with that straight leg. Feel the back of the leg light up in a different way. It's the, the um, hamstrings and the, quad, and the glutes doing the work here. Let the belly help by staying alive and lifted. It's gonna be little pulses faster than your breath. Just let that warm up. Then bring the knee in towards the forehead. Exhale it long, inhale it long, and contract. Inhale it long, and contract. Two more. Inhale long, contract, inhale long, contract, inhale long. And this time lower the foot to the floor and roll so that the, the sole of your foot and then the inside edge of that foot, the working leg, is on the floor. You can you can pivot the kneeling leg out to form a little bit of a tripod pod stand. We're coming into a variation of side plank. So from here, press into the hand on the floor, the left hand, if, which is the same as the knee that's holding the weight. So you might be on your right side. And let that shoulder and the whole chest and belly roll open to the room. If you have room in your shoulder, you can take it, you can take your arm towards over your head and feel the whole length of that stretch from the right foot on the floor through the side and out the fingers. If you're feeling really frisky, you can also lift that top leg. It could just be a little bit of a balance test or perhaps you're able to take it off and find a strong balance. And use your breath here, keep breathing. Shoulder blades are flat on the back, reaching all the way through that heel 
through the fingertips and release. And we'll come down and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm taking my left foot back. You're taking whichever foot you haven't worked yet. If you're with me, it's the left. Press out through the heel. Out through the heel. And feel that extension through the back of the leg. Keep that belly lifted to help balance you and keep your core working and alive. Make sure that your weight is working towards the knuckles and fingers of your hands on the floor. If, you're, if, you're, if your wrists start to bother you, you can come up to fists. That's a good variation. But see if your hands are working for you, that you make sure you're taking care of them by not collapsing back into the wrists. Then lift that leg and push out through the heel. Feel the length of the leg. Then begin the little flexes, the little, little lifts, little contractions in the back of the leg. And the toes are pointing down, heel is reaching back, belly stays alive. Faster than your breath. See if you can create some heat in the back of that leg. Now make the pulses smaller and smaller. And with an exhale, bring the knee in underneath you. And then you reach it back long. Knee comes back underneath you. Inhale long. Exhale, knee towards forehead. Inhale long. Two more times, feel the belly working. And after the last one, turn the foot so that the sole of the lifted foot comes to the ground. The back leg can pivot out to give you like a kickstand effect for balance. And feel your body roll open all the way to find that side angle variation. The arm can stay here or the arm can come towards over the head. This is a, this is a perfect pose. This is also a perfect pose. Here's another perfect pose. Here's another perfect pose. They're all exactly right if they're right for you today. The one that's right for you today is the perfect pose. Let your breath help you. Then the right arm comes back to, or the left arm for me comes back to the floor, the knee comes back to the floor and Take yourself back again towards child's pose. Use whichever arm variation you prefer. It could be long arms. It could be the diamond shape with your arms. Also your knees can be, your thighs can be lined up together or they can be opening wide to allow your belly to relax down, whichever feels best for you. This is a good, this is a resting pose. So find where you rest best. Feel the breath pour into your lower back all the way in. And feel as you exhale your whole spine lengthening and relaxing. So now with an in-breath, rise up. 
Rise up to hands and knees. Take a moment to reorient this position. We're going to come to some lunges. So let's take the, well, put the, put the blanket just to the side for the moment. We may still want it. So the easiest way to step into your lunges is to, first of all, let's take the blocks up to the front of the mat, have them on, start on the high side, you can adjust them wherever you want. The easiest way to, to step into a lunge is to first come to the top of your mat. And let's take a moment in mountains since we're now standing up and that's different again. You can take a shoulder shrug, maybe three. Make sure that you have your alignment where you want it. The shoulders back towards the hips, the ears reaching back towards the shoulders, knees with a micro bend, just relaxed. Feet flat and happy on the floor, all four corners of the feet on the floor, toes can lift and open and relax, spread onto the ground. Now, come to a forward bend. Exhale to a forward bend. Let's come, everyone come to a flat back. You can use your uh, blocks as a prop here. And if you have no problem with inversions, if, you, if inversions are not right for you, you're gonna stay with this nice flat back and work here. If you don't need, if you want to come farther forward, just release even farther forward. And you can let your knees bend, particularly this first forward fold. Let your belly drape over the thighs, the head relax, and feel the forward fold here. If you're in the full forward fold and you want to take your hands so that your thumbs come into your elbow crooks and you have a ragdoll position, that's great, that's fine. Enjoy this for two more breaths. And with your knees, come, let's all come back to the straight back and bend your knees. Then take the right foot and step it back. We'll come to Anjali Asana, which is the same as the runner's lunge. The, the uh, toes are turned under. There may be someone who finds that the toes turned under is really painful. If that is true, then put your full foot down and allow it to turn as much forward as is correct for you. But let's, if you can, if it's okay for you, have your toes under for now. That gives a nice stretch to the foot. So take a moment here to find your strength. Push both feet into the floor. Allow the legs to work towards each other. The inside and the outside of those, those legs to pull together. And from the blocks, try putting your hands onto your thighs and taking yourself all the way up to Anjali Asana. Pull crescent lunge. Now, if this is really not working for you at all, the wonderful alternative is available of having this knee on the ground. You may find that this is much better for you today. So you can experiment with this. If you feel like this is a lot of work and you don't feel steady or happy, then take yourself down to the Anjaleas. I'm going to uh, go back and forth between the two for demonstration purposes. Right now I'm showing all the way up to Anjali Asana. Crescent lunge. See if you can, whichever position you're in, line up those two hip bones. Use your breath. This is a strong pose. It's a lot of work to stay here. So let's play with it. Try at pushing into the front foot as you exhale 
and bending the arms to crescent. Then inhale, return to the full pose. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Now everybody take the hands to the blocks and lower that back knee. So we're all in the lower version of the lunge. Find your stability here. The blocks are a big help. You can play with the height, see which is what's correct for you. Now let the hips relax forward a little bit and feel the stretch along these lifter muscles on the inside, on the inside top of the thigh of the leg that stretch behind you. Why does the chest be lifted? As much as possible. The belly is strong, the shoulders can be relaxed, although the arms are working to hold you up. Now push into the front foot and bring the weight over that back knee. The blanket here is very helpful. And wiggle that the extended leg a little bit forward so you can actually straighten that forward leg and lift the toes up. You can move the blocks as you need to to make this more accessible. Right here, we're in half Hanuman, which is the front half of a full splits, but we're not gonna do the whole thing, just the front half. So find that position. Now you may need to come way up to make this comfortable, that's fine. Whatever you need to do is a strong stretch along the back of the extended leg. From your lifted position, find how much you want to move your trunk forward for a stretch. Just experiment with it. See where the right place for you is. Whatever you're doing, you want to keep that back long, back of the neck long as you as you move your chest and belly forward, rather than reaching your head to your knee by making a C shape with your spine. You want to keep your back long and find a real stretch all through the back of the leg rather than stressing your lower back. It's also possible to go back and forth between the lunge and Hanuman. And we do that by inhaling bringing the weight forward and exhaling and taking the weight back. Inhaling and bringing the weight forward. Exhaling and taking the leg back. This might be lovely for you or it might not feel good. Again, adjust according to what is right for you. Let's do, I'm going to do one more. Take the leg back and finish with the leg forward and take a breath here. Then pressing into the blocks and my foot, I'm going to re-fold my back toes and come up then step both feet forward and come to a half lift again. Take a breath with a flat back forward fold and then with the belly working, come all the way up to standing. Arms come through to the sky and down to the heart. Standing in mountain pose, We'll take a moment here, three breaths. You can add a shoulder shrug if that's appropriate for you. Then hands on hips, and we're going to step back with the opposite foot. For me, that's my left foot. 
I started with my right foot to find the lunge. So I'm, I, we didn't do that exactly the same way. Let's repeat, come back to the forward fold, bend your knees, and then step back. Let's keep that a little bit more control. So here we are in the beginning of Anjali Asana. Again, if you need to adjust the back foot, please do so. First of all, find your strength. Push those feet into the floor. Let the legs work towards each other as if they're scissor blades scissoring shut. And if you're ready to come up to full Anjali Asana, you can climb up by putting the hands on the thigh first. Find your length in your by the length in your spine. It's okay if your balance is a little off and you need to adjust coming up. And then the arms rise all the way up to crescent lunge. A breath here. Now, if you need to be lower, if it was better for you to be in low lunge, that's perfectly wonderful. So you can be in high lunge or low lunge. We'll all come to low lunge in a moment. From here, to play with this one a little, let's change the arms up. And this time, as you straighten, bring the arms in towards a hug. And as you come forward, take the arms back into Superman cape. So forward, you can alternate, put your arms on top to a hug and back as you return to the lunge, Superman kick. The front leg is straightening and bending, balance work. You can also do the balance work here with your hands. You can do the straightening and lowering with your hands on the blocks if that's better. I'll do two more of the full program. Everyone bring your hands to the blocks, lower the back knee. Find your long back here and make sure that you are pulling this back, this top or front hip back into alignment so that your pelvis is even. If you allow yourself to uh, get too much off, it can be really awkward. So, Use the strength of the back of the pelvis and the belly to line yourself up straight. And you can bring your arms back up to Anjali Asana. Lots of work here, huh? One more full breath. Take the hands to the blocks. And you know the arm positions are always optional. You can always keep your arms on the blocks, wiggle that front foot forward, come towards hop on and I like to bring my block blocks back a little bit for this. Stretch the heel out, and you might find that depends on the how open your the back of your leg is, where your back is going to be, because you want your back to stay straight, it may have to be up really high. You might be able to come a little bit further forward. You're coming forward, the blocks are here for balance. See what, explore the back of this leg, feel what's going on. It can be very, very different than the other. Let your front lower, the chest relax towards the thigh, back of the neck is long, and breathe. This is the same muscle we were stretching with the strap at the beginning of class. Same set of muscles. That stretch on the floor is a lovely one because your back, the floor is holding your back in a beautiful position. So imagine that you have that floor now to help you align your back into a long straight line. And we are going to flow between those two positions, the Hanuman and the Crescent Lunge. 
If the flow is too fast for you, please move at your own pace. You can take one full breath in each position. You can take two full breaths in each position. You can take five full breaths in each position, whatever works for you. I'm flowing between them with the inhale and the exhale. So with the inhale, I'm coming to Crescent. With the exhale, I'm coming towards Hanuman. But it does not have to move that quickly. And this should feel lovely. If it is painful or too difficult, if you're not able to keep your breath moving correctly, then you know you can always modify. The first step of modification is going to a smaller range of motion. And then we begin to pull out of a pose completely and do something else. One more time. I'm going to stop here for a moment with a full breath. And we're going to step forward into a forward fold to come back to standing. So make sure that you are using your belly as you come up to standing. Because if you Compress your belly and come up. You're using the full strength of your back and stomach. Your belly muscles, so important. So come to your forward fold. And now if you want to come to a deeper forward fold, this is a lovely time to do it. Let's do it with our hands on the blocks, reaching out sort of like the front half of a downward dog. Let the head relax. You can have a bend in your knees as much as you need, as much as feels good for you. You can straighten your legs if that feels appropriate. And heel or walk your feet forward towards the blocks and come all the way up into standing. Lift the arms with an inhale. Bring the hands through center and return to mountain pose. You can move the blanket away from your mat for a moment. And take your uh, mountain pose to the, to the long side of your mat. Let's gather here, shrug the shoulders up and back. Step the feet apart for a moment and do a little bit of hip rotation. That's some pretty good work with those poses. Whatever feels good, there's no rules about this. You're in your house, nobody can see you. You can get down as much as you want. Let it loosen up, let it free up. And enjoy that feeling. And let's take the feet together and check alignment one more time. Start with the feet, four corners on the floor, lift the toes. Spread them apart and let them relax onto the floor. Feel the insides of your legs alive and a little bit of action where they are working towards each other, just as if you had a block between your knees. The knees are relaxed. They're not hyperextended, pushed back. They're relaxed so that the back of the pelvis can be long. Shoulders are reaching back over the hips and then the 
chin parallel to the floor, back of the head reaches back so that the ears are towards the shoulders. Deep breath, three times, arms rise. And gather, exhale. And gather to the heart and exhale. Last time, deep breath. And exhale, hands to hips. Let's step wide and come into warrior two. So the feet step into a nice wide position, three or more feet to rotate the right toes out. Right foot is parallel to the floor. Left toes turn in. Check your heels. The, the, you can be aligned heel to heel, which is a little less of a um, twisting opening. It's good, stable position. If you have a, a little bit more room, you may be able to line up the front heel to the back arch. Just depends on where your body is today. As your feet are reaching towards the short side of the mat, the hips stay lined up with the long side of the mat. And the front knee works back as you bend that knee. Knee stays in a position where you can still look over the knee and see your toes. So no more than a right angle with the floor. And let the length of this position, the stability of your legs, which can still be isometrically pulling towards each other for balance. Then from the, here, you lift the arms long, the shoulders reaching back. So the, the front of your body, the top front of your body is reaching towards the long, edge room, the long edge of the mat, that wall, and the head rotates to look over the front fingers. Another strong position. So let's add some motion to make it easier to hold. So from here, let's see, what shall we do with this one? Let's straighten the leg and come to cactus and reach forward and straighten the leg and come to cactus and reach forward and straighten the leg arms to cactus and reach the arms long. This time the front arm takes us way forward and we come either here with the arms straight or if you have room with the arm bent and resting on the front leg, that strong bent knee, into side angle pose. So the shoulders are rotating open and the top arm rises. Ah, side angle. And then if you have room, you can take the arm towards over your head and have, again, that long line, just like we were practicing with the side angle variation on the floor long line, back edge, knife edge of that rear foot, all the way through the fingertips. And that shoulder is working back. So we're rotating open towards the sky. If you have, uh, if the head is feeling strong, you can actually look towards the top hand. But that is absolutely, un it doesn't have to be there. And breathe, deep breaths. Three long breaths. Holding and improving this strong pose as we hold it. Then let that top arm take, come back. And if your best friend is here and pulling you out, you come out of that pose. And rotate the heels, feet forward. Come forward into a forward bend here. First, three more breaths. Now forward bend from that hip crease with a long back. If you want to grab one of your blocks and bring it forward, that's always helpful. 
I did not offer you the blocks on that uh, warrior two. I'm so sorry, I forgot that. Come to a nice flat back. Stay here if you are not feeling good about inversions or if your back is really telling you this is the right place to be. And if you have more room and want to come forward, you can come even farther forward, feeling the stretch along the inside of your thighs. Arm variations here, taking the arms out into a downward dog position is great. Or you can walk your arms back towards your feet. Then that's all, of course, if this is a comfortable bend for you. Two nice full breaths here, wherever you landed. Push into the floor, find your flat back. Use your belly to lift you and rotate the other foot out. For me, it's the left foot. Toes are, the whole foot is in line with the mat, parallel to the long edge of the mat. Back foot is strong. Check your base, make sure the feet are strongly planted, knees working back, legs are working towards each other, and find your warrior two on the opposite side. On this side, let's take the archer arms. So bring the arm forward and open wide four times. In breath. Arms are very similar to our beginning shoulder opener. And open. We'll come towards a side angle pose, and you can have your block here for this. This might be your side angle. This might be your side angle. This might be your side angle. Wherever is comfortable for you. The arm comes up. Feel yourself opening wide. And the option is to bring it over the ear. Wherever you are, look for that long line from the back foot through the top arm. And let that top arm come to the back. Find your imaginary friend. Come up. Heel toe your, straddle your feet towards what we used to call parallel position. Then heel toe the feet together and come to standing. Take another minute to relax, loosen up. At this time, let's take a swing with the arms. So loosen your arms up. And for this, you can have your feet oh, even wider than hip width. Comfortable, not, not towards horse stance or anything, but a comfortable, oh, I'd say 18 inches. And begin to rotate, letting the arms flop. Now, it's possible to do this keeping the head looking forward. And those of us who have suffered with vertigo may prefer that. Or you can take your head over your shoulder with the action. Ah, release, release. Enjoy this for a moment. See if you find any pleasure here. That actually, some people say this is a little slap to the kidney area, which is what your kidneys like. I'm not sure about that, but well, it's an interesting idea. Then make the, make the motion smaller. Take the heels together and we're going to come to the wall and do a balance. Now my wall, I say wall, I have a fireplace. You may have a chair or a, a real wall or a uh, counter, whatever you have. Whatever you have for balance is perfectly fine. So find your balance place. We've been working with um, the beginnings of King Dancer Pose, and we're going to continue with that. 
So let the weight come into your wall. Let the wall focus next to the wall. Feel that foot strong and mighty as the other foot gets light. And then lift that foot and reach back for it. Now, this is a lovely place to add your strap if that foot is too far away. You can always grab your pants, whatever works for you, but you're working towards getting that foot. And the next step is bringing this top lifted leg in line with the standing working leg. And that lineup for most of us will begin to feel a nice stretch along the quadricep. Um, if you can add to that, you're going to bring your, your heel towards your bum. And for balance, you can take your arms straight up, which is the real beginning uh, of the uh, King Dancer, or you can put it on your hip or perhaps your chest if that is a better balance point for you. Breathe here. And hand returns to the balance point so that you can experiment with tipping slightly forward. And as you do that, you can remove that hand if you want to and see if you can find your balance with a slight tip forward, keeping the chest lined up with this top working leg. So we're not compressing by tipping that way. We're tipping with a piece. So it may be a very small movement. And that's fine. That's just, we're just beginning. And reaching the hand up. And exhale. Take a wiggle and turn for the other side. And a foot. First, find that good stretch along the hamstring. I'd like to imagine the top, this top working knee reaching towards the ground. That gives me a sense of expansion and stretch. And from this position, we'll begin our tip forward. You can have your, your um, steady point right there for you, or you can experiment without it. See what happens. Make sure you have a nice focus point and just play with it. All the work you do for balance improves your balance. Release that foot. We're coming to the ground. So make your way towards the seat on the ground. Ah. Let's come to Dandasana, which is staff pose. Making an L with your body. It's okay if you have your hands back and it's not quite an L more of a V. Press out through the heels and then press down with the legs. Press into the ground with the legs. Feel the strength of your legs. Feel those muscles lighting up. The legs have taken us so very, very far, so many miles, and they have so many miles left to go. Now with the legs alight, Grab hold of the belly, make the belly strong. We're coming down to a full Shavasana pose. So lower through, you can put your hands out front and lower through the back one vertebrae at a time, or you can support this action and lower back one vertebrae at a time. This is called string of pearls sometimes because we're trying to feel each vertebrae. Let your hands support you if that's better for you. Go as slowly as you can, control, and find yourself on the ground. Deep breath in. 
Deep breath out. From here, bend your knees and walk your feet towards the edges of your mat. Take the arms out into T-pose and do your own version of the windshield wipers. It can be with one leg at a time or both legs. It can be slow or fast. Let those legs rotate from side to side. Keep that breath moving. That was a lot of work. So keep your breath moving through the body, helping to release whatever strain we created, enjoying the newfound mobility and strength. And it's time to come towards Shavasana. So prepare yourself. We have time for a nice Shavasana today. I'd like you to join me at the end of Shavasana for just a moment or two of silent meditation. So right now, if you need another twist, if you want to do happy baby, if there's anything your body is asking you for, it's the time to do that pose. If you're ready to come to Shavasana and when you're ready to come to Shavasana, um, Always a blanket under the knees, rolled up under the knees is wonderful, especially if your back is at all cranky. You can do Shavasana with your legs, uh, your knees bent, if that's more comfortable for you. You're home, you can do Shavasana, shavasana in a fetal pose if that's more comfortable for you. Um, but make sure you're warm enough. If you need something supporting your head, please take care of that. And we will have at least, well, we have at least five minutes for Shavasana today, which is much longer than we've been able to do. So it may feel really long. Uh, please trust me, I won't let you be here all day. Take your time, start with some deep breaths. You can use the grounding breath that comes into your belly and your lower, lower body, which we've been working with. Or if you prefer that breath breath where you bring the breath strongly into the upper chest and let the shoulders relax, please do that. Release your jaw. If your jaw is one of those places, send some good energy into tucking the shoulder blades under you. Uh, rock that lower back. Make sure you have your lower back nice and tucked and long as you begin Shavasana so that you will be really comfy and released. And then let the noises of your environment lighten and fade. Let your breath take its own path. And just observe it. and then release it all and find that quiet center and enjoy that lovely, peaceful place.
Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. Feel the love, the longing, the fear in your bones. Open your heart to who you are right now. Not who you would like to be, not the saint you are striving to be, but the being right here before you, inside you, around you, all of you is holy. You are already more and less than whatever you can know. Breathe out, touch in, let go. Allow your breath to lengthen and taking good care of yourself. Wake up your limbs and your center. When you're ready, roll to the right and come to a seat and join me for just a few breaths of meditation before we finish. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time for yourselves, for taking care of yourselves. Namaste. It's 11.30, so if you need to move on, move on. I'm going to stop our recording and open it up to chat if you need to, if you have something you'd like to say, or just say hello.